It's often lamented that our modern world is very go, go, go and full of pressure to succeed from a young age. Students are granted college admissions based on their grades, sure, but also on their test performance, extracurricular involvement, their essay writing abilities, and often their intangibles. This has been cited as one factor in the rise of anxiety disorders. But did you know the U.S. National Institute of Mental Health says that anxiety disorders disproportionately affect women? According to their statistics, females are 60% more likely to develop an anxiety disorder than males. And author Rashma Sajani says that is due in part to our expectations that girls and women constantly be perfect. Let's just sit at the playground any day, right? And we'll see our boys kind of crawl to the top of the monkey bars and just jump off head first. And then we watch our girls and we see moms and dads like, it's okay, honey, you know, be careful. You know, don't climb too high. You know, your dress is dirty. Come here, let me let me change you. Or like, you know, don't take that toy away. You know, from the, from the beginning, we're like coddling our girls and we're protecting them. And sometimes it's in the name of safety, right? We want to make sure that they don't fall and get hurt. But what happens is as girls get older, they get addicted to perfection, and they start giving up before they even try. Sajani is the founder and CEO of Girls Who Code and tackles the issue of sky-high expectations for women in her book, Brave, Not Perfect. She says she and her colleagues often see the effects of this drive for perfection in classes aimed at teaching young women to code. When girls come to Girls Who Code, almost all of them have had like little to no experience with coding. And every teacher at Girls Who Code would tell me the same story. She'd say, you know, when I'm first teaching a student how to code, the student would call her teacher over and she'd say, I don't know a code to write. And the teacher would look at her student's screen and she'd see a blank text editor. So if the teacher didn't know any better, she would thought, oh, okay, my student just spent the past 20 minutes just staring at the screen. But when the teacher pressed undo on the computer a few times, she saw that actually her student wrote code but then deleted it. So instead of showing the teacher the progress that she made, she rather show her nothing at all. It's this idea of like perfection or bust. And it just really became so clear to me again how like because girls are so ingrained to be perfect that they are literally giving up before they even try. So Johnny also writes in her book about a story that is familiar to many of us, a story about a young girl in high school who seems like she has it all, good grades and plenty of friends, but is actually drowning in a sea of uncertainty. Here's Erica, and for her whole life, she had been doing essentially a calculation in her head, which is like, should I tell you what I really think, or should I tell you what I think is going to make you happy? And, like, if you start being a toxic people pleaser from the time you are 8, 9, 10 years old, by the time you get older, you're living almost someone else's life. And all the things that you want to do, have a baby by yourself, quit the job that you hate, you don't do because you're so worried about what other people are going to think. And you thought that if you live the perfect life, you would be happy. And so that's confusing you, too, because you're like, why aren't I happy? And so... I think that we've been sold a bad bill of goods, that perfectionism creates happiness, and it doesn't. And it's why women are twice as likely to be depressed as men, because all of us know that feeling where there's something we want to do, start a company, have a baby on our own. You know what I mean? Do something that's about us, and we talk ourselves out of it. So Johnny says that these issues really strike a chord in her, because for a long time, she felt that same pressure to never make a mistake. I was a daughter of immigrants. My family came here as refugees. So I spent like my entire life trying to credentialize myself, to be perfect, to be the valedictorian, to get that perfect big law job. And I woke up at age 33 just miserable. Like I would come home every night and I would just crawl into the fetal position. I remember one day I was sitting in like my windowless office and my best friend called. And it's funny how, like, your best friend always calls you when your life is, like, falling apart, right? And she's like, what's wrong? And I was just like, I'm so unhappy, and I thought I did everything perfectly, and I don't know why I'm so unhappy. And she just said, you know what, Deep is like, just quit. And I was like, I can do that? And it was, it took me until I was 33 years old to start living life authentically, to start living life bravely. For me, that meant 
confronting what my biggest desire was, and that was to run for office and to serve. And so I quit my job, and I literally ran for Congress in a race that I had no chance of winning against someone who had been there for 18 years. But it was the best 10 months of my life. And what happened is I lost, and I lost pretty bad. Like, it wasn't even close. And I was broke. I was humiliated. I had pissed off everybody in the Democratic establishment. But the thing is, is like, it didn't break me. And for so long in my life, I had thought that, well, if I failed, it will literally break me. I won't be able to recover. And the big aha moment for me was that I could recover. And that's when I started living my life brave, not perfect. And every choice that I've made after that is from the lens of like, is this the braver choice? But what does Sajani mean by brave? She says bravery is not about making yourself into a superhero, but about valuing yourself above the expectations of others. Bravery, it's like, it's not like dragon slaying or like, you know, saving a baby from like a burning building. It's doing what you want to do and always making the braver choice. I mean, I think about this story I talk about in the book about this little girl in North Carolina who you're, during Princess Week showed up instead of as a princess, as a hot dog. And it was awesome. Like, that's bravery, right? That's showing up like a hot dog during Princess Week is bravery. So how can one become brave, not perfect? So Johnny says it really is just learning to value your dreams above others' wishes for you. But she has a few concrete steps that can help that adjustment take place. One, practice imperfection, depending on what that means for you. So for a lot of women I know, they will literally rewrite and reread their emails over and over again, make sure that there are no typos in them and that there are lots of emojis and explanation points. And they spend hours on end when they could be doing something else. So the first thing I say is practice imperfection. Send out an email with a typo in it. Just do it. And what you're going to realize is like the world is not going to fall apart, right? And it might be sending out an email with a typo in it. Practicing imperfection might be bringing store-bought cookies to the bake sale rather than homemade. It might be going on, you know, running your errands without a full face of makeup. Like whatever that means for you, practice imperfection. Second thing I say is do something you suck at. Go to a yoga class, even though you can't do a handstand. You know, try surfing. Go for a walk, right, if you're not like a, you know, a fitness connoisseur. Like do something you think you suck at. And just for the sake of enjoying the journey. Third thing is, is just start. We avoid big projects or things that we think that we want to do because we think they're too big, right? I had a woman at my nail salon who said, you know what? I want to start my own company, but like, I don't even know how to do that because I'm not good at business. So what I said to her is, you know what? Just go buy a URL. Go tell somebody, a friend that you want to start this company. Just take one step. It can be scary, of course. There's a reason so many people end up doing what others expect of them. It's the path of least resistance. But Sajani says putting herself first has made a big positive difference in her life. I'm just happier. You know, I um, after I had my son, I just could not lose the baby weight. And I just hated looking at pictures of myself. And I, for me, because of my job, if I was going to get to the gym, it was going to have to be at 730 It was literally when my dog, Stanley, is like looking at me like, really, lady? And my son is like, mama. But you know what? I just started walking out that door at 730 in the morning and letting them figure it out. And it felt good. It felt good to have the courage to do something for me. And so I try to do that in my life. And I'm not saying it's easy. And I fall on and off the bravery wagon. But The moments where I stand up for myself and I do something for me, it feels so good. And I forgive myself when I don't. So Johnny hopes her book can be a spark and a revolution that leads to more women chasing their dreams. She says such a revolution will become more and more possible the more women can rally behind each other. If we can create a community where we're supporting each other or we're lifting each other up or we're cheering each other on, or we're not making it feel like we're the only one or that we're alone and we feel this way and nobody else does, that we're not crazy. And that's, I, I, I again think so much of this lack of sisterhood amongst women is because we don't do the things that we want to do and we see other people doing them and we feel bad about our own lives. So when we start being brave and we start living our life for ourselves, it will literally, we will open ourselves up to others 
and we will start rooting each other on and cheering each other on. Some of the women that I know that are the most generous with their networks and with their time and with their love and their support, it's because they don't have regret and envy in their life. They do the things that they want to do, regardless of the outcomes, regardless of how people feel about them. Rash Masajani's book, Brave Not Perfect, is available now. For more information on all of our guests, visit our site at viewpointsonline.net. You can find an archive of past programs there and on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. Our show is written and produced by Evan Rook. Our executive producer is Reed Pence. I'm Marty Peterson. Viewpoints returns in just a moment. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control of your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank accounts, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problem now by calling the experts at U.S. Tax Shield and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new law that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. U.S. Tax Shield offers a price protection guaranteed quote to get you protected today. U.S. Tax Shield is A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, so call now, 800-568-1647. That's 800-568-1647. U.S. Tax Shield, 800-568-1647. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you can donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-835-1478. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you, you'll receive a free three day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. Call 1 800 835 1478. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher for donating. Call now, 1-800-835-1478. That's 1-800-835-1478. And that's Viewpoints for this week. Viewpoints is a production of Media Tracks Communications. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook to learn about upcoming shows and find a library of past programs on iTunes. Plus, you'll always find podcasts of our segments and information about our guests at viewpointsonline.net. Join us again next week for your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. Viewpoints.